For more insight, let's speak now with John Herbst. He's a senior director of the Eurasia Center at the Atlantic Council. He's also a former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, joining us from Fairfax, Virginia. Ambassador Herbst, thank you so much for your time. First off, just how significant is Zelensky's pre-Christmas trip to the White House? And, and beyond the symbolic moment of the U.S. president meeting the Ukrainian president, what are both leaders trying to achieve here? Well, there are several reasons why this is an important visit. First of all, Zelensky will be bringing home um, an advanced air defense system, Patriots, which we for months refused to send and finally agreed to send. That's very important. It'll make it easier for Ukraine, at least in one area of the country, to defend its infrastructure from the massive Russian bombing campaign. Two in importance, it sends a, a strong signal to Moscow that American support for Ukraine is strong and growing stronger as Putin escalates his war on the people of Ukraine. Uh, and what did, at the same time, say so go ahead. No, sorry, uh, Ambassador, please continue. Um, I was going to say at the same time, we see the um, continuing uh, timidity on the part of the administration in giving Ukraine what it needs to succeed in this war. Um, Biden made clear he's not sending longer range artillery to Ukraine, which Ukraine desperately needs, one, to take back more Ukrainian territory, and two, to stop the Iranian drone strikes, which are being um, launched from Crimea. If we sent longer range artillery, they could destroy those sites, and that would mean fewer Russian bombs, in this case of Iranian origin, landing on Ukrainian civilians and Ukrainian infrastructure. And what does it tell us about President Zelensky and how he feels comfortable enough to leave Ukraine while it's still very much at war? And what do you expect him to say when he addresses Congress? Well, I suspect he decided to come because the Biden administration wanted him there. I think that's the main reason. Uh, we know that the decision on Patriots was supposed to be announced last week. That was leaked. So that makes his visit from the Ukrainian point of view a little bit of an anticlimax. If there had been no leak last week and Zelensky got here and could announce it and learn that we're getting patriots, the Ukrainian people would have said, look what a successful visit it was. But to say last week expected the patriots, they see that a little bit less. So Zelensky's here because Biden wanted him here, and that's fine. He should be grateful for the patriots and for the ongoing American support for Ukraine. This also gives him a chance to tell the American public, the American Congress, Thank you for all the aid you're giving us. That's very important. What would be even better, though, make this trip even better, if President Biden said directly to the American people, we have a vital stake, American security and American prosperity is tied up with Ukraine defeating Putin. We haven't heard that from the White House yet, and that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. More in that speech uh, that's going to take place in an hour's time. How effective do you think Zelensky's address will be in making it harder for Republicans, some of whom have been pushing back against increased aid, to say no after he speaks to them face to face? I mean, how persuasive does he need to be? Um, I believe that a large number of the populist wing of the Republican Party um, is opposed to assistance to Ukraine because they frankly are ignorant about American interests. They don't understand that Putin has aggressive designs which directly challenge the United States. If they understood that, they'd realize that providing assistance to Ukraine, $50 billion a year, which is a lot of money, is actually a bargain because that money is destroy chopping up the Russian military and making it far less likely American troops will have to fight and die to defend our NATO allies in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, not to mention Poland. Now, uh, it's possible that Zelensky can persuade a small number of those populist Republicans, but only a small number. Uh, but, but Zelensky has another, another challenge here. He really does need those longer-range artillery. He really does need tanks, which the Biden administration is refusing to send. So he needs to, to say to tell Congress that Ukraine needs those things and do it in a way that does not annoy the White House. That's the real drama in what Zelensky will say to Congress. How will he handle that problem? And Ambassador, why is there the sort of the, I mean, if Zelensky wants more arms and needs them to sort of uh, retake territory 
within Ukraine and to fend off Russia. Why is uh, the U.S. Uh, holding some back? Um, I think that there's just in general terms a timidity in parts of the administration, decisive parts of the administration, that doesn't fully understand how dangerous Putin is to us and how much stronger we, the collective West, led by the United States, are than Russia. So they've let Putin intimidate us by threatening nuclear escalation, not recognizing that there's a long history of America dealing with an adversary with nuclear weapons and defending our interests strongly, even as we prudently took steps to avoid nuclear war. And Ambassador Russia, obviously, will be watching this very closely. It says that nothing good will come out of the trip and that Moscow sees no chance of peace talks. How do you expect Putin will respond to uh, Zelensky's Washington visit? And has it sort of increased the risk of escalating the war into open conflict between the U.S. and Russia? Um, Russia does not want a conflict with the United States. Their military is not competent enough to deal with Ukraine's military. And keep in mind, we have not sent um, many of our most advanced weapons to Ukraine. Our lesser advanced weapons, like the HIMARS, which are a technology that's 30 years old, have stopped the Russian military. So Putin, Putin has found that by threatening escalation, he sometimes intimidates us from taking the strong measures we need to strengthen our own security. That's very sad. And it's unfortunate that President Biden today um, resorted to that fear in explaining why we're not going to send the longer range missiles to Ukraine. That is an invitation to further, further threats from the Kremlin. It does not serve American interests and it's not worthy statesmanship for a superpower, the leader of a superpower. Putin has gotten some things. He's intimidated us at times with threatening nuclear um, escalation. But when his threats have been ignored and his red lines challenged, for example, when it became clear that Sweden and NATO, excuse me, Sweden and Finland would join NATO, we have found that Putin's threats have been just bluff and not real. All right, Ambassador Herbs, we have to leave it there for now. Well, thank you so much for your insight this morning. John Herbs, the senior director of Eurasia Center at Atlantic Council, also the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine.